Here in the uh, C-SPAN studio to continue our discussion regarding U.S. troop withdrawal from Iraq is Richard Weitz of the Hudson Institute. Welcome. Mark, thank you for having me. Um, your thoughts on the president's speech yesterday? Well, um, given its location, it made sense that the president spent a lot of time discussing veterans' benefits and how he's going to make whole what everyone recognizes as a great sacrifice and, and contribution on the part of the, the, the veterans, particularly those who served in Iraq. Um, what I found interesting in particular was he spent, as far as I can uh, see, a bit more time on laying out his detailed strategy for Afghanistan rather than Iraq. There are still some uncertainties about how things will evolve between Iraq and the United States after U.S. troops leave, particularly in the economic and political diplomatic realm. Um, whereas yesterday he talked again about his strategy in Iraq, the, uh, Afghanistan, the surge, and how that fits into his framework and the importance of dealing with al-Qaeda. So it was, it was interesting because it originally was presented as a speech to deal with Iraq. Um, we want to show parts of uh, the president's speech. The first part uh, where he talks about uh, his uh, commitment after taking office uh, and announcing a new strategy for Iraq and then the follow-through. Shortly after taking office, I announced our new strategy for Iraq and for a transition to full Iraqi responsibility. And I made it clear that by August 31st, 2010, America's combat mission in Iraq would end. And that is exactly what we are doing, as promised and on schedule. Richard Weitz, the uh, headline in the Philadelphia Inquirer this morning says, uh, Obama says Iraq pull out on track, combat uh, forces will leave on schedule. Uh, are you in agreement with that? Uh, for the most part, I think that the, uh, due to the, to the change in strategy in, the, in 2007, 2008, which has been continued by President Obama, uh, we've seen a, a, what looks to be a successful transition to pretty much an Iraq, Iraq military lead. I mean, they, they're, uh, even after the end of this month, there'll still be 50,000 U.S. troops there, and although they're framed as basically advisors and trainers, they, they can, of course, engage in combat in, if necessary. Uh, but it looks to be what we're going to see is just a, a series of terrorists in the, in the strict definition of the word, strikes with attacks on civilians and so on, which I think the Iraqi Forces may not be able to present, but it's not going to present a, a major threat to the to the durability of the government and so on. We're talking with Richard White of the Hudson Institute uh, regarding U.S. troop withdrawal from Iraq. If you'd like to get involved in the conversation, the number is 202-737-0001 for Republicans. Democrats, 202-737-0002. Independents, 202-628-0205. And as always, you can send us uh, messages via Twitter and email. You mentioned uh, terrorist attacks. Um, tell us about, um, from your observations, the status of al-Qaeda in Iraq and what effect the president's announcement is going to have on that status. Well, there is a group that calls al-Qaeda in Iraq, and it's always been contested to what extent it relates to the original al-Qaeda. Uh, some of the people here have been inspired by al-Qaeda and trying to emulate al-Qaeda, but they basically set up something of an autonomous group. It looked like around 2008 they were pretty much defeated by the surge. So maybe uh, they were basically doing what they've been doing since then, it's basically terrorist strikes, and really not presenting a major, not a major political force. Uh, there's, there's a little speculation that they've seen an uptick recently because of the, the nature of the attacks. They've been very well uh, thought out and they've inflicted a lot of casualties. But there's still a, a minor force, and I, I, it's hard for me to envision how the, uh, that they would be able to conduct an operation, for example, against the United States the way we've seen which occurred in Afghanistan before September 2001. Um, and it says uh, here uh, in the Philadelphia Inquirer, marking a long-sought milestone in a much maligned war, President Obama affirmed Monday that American combat troops would leave Iraq by the end of August as promised and on schedule as the United States moves towards a support role in a country still struggling with violence and a fractured government. 